Another useful theorem or idea involves sequences that oscillate in some sense. They're, they're the sign of their value. And so that's when this usually comes in. Um, in words, it says that if the limit or if the absolute value of the terms are going to zero, then the sequence itself is going to zero. Um, and that's, um, you can prove that using a couple different theorems or definitions, but I think what we'll do is just kind of leave it up to, just use a little bit of a numerical exploration of that. So, um, first thing to keep in mind is that this condition needs to be met, like you need your, the absolute value of the terms to go to zero and no other thing. So you'll, we'll see that you, I mean, if it goes to six or something, it doesn't mean that the limit of the, um, the sequence itself goes to six. So this only applies when the terms are going to, the absolute value of the terms are going to zero. Um, so here it says show that a sub n equals negative one to the n over one divided by three to the n converges and find its limit. <clears throat> so let, let's just apply the theorem directly and then we'll maybe take a look at a few numerical um, new, uh, numerical values to see why it's true. So according to this theorem, right, this oscillates, we could just say, we could take the limit of the absolute value of it, so the absolute value of negative 1 to the n divided by 1 over 3 to the n. Well, when you do that, you're basically looking at 1 over 3 to the n, where all the terms are positive. They're not oscillating. So this is just the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 3 to the n. And now if we think about plugging in large values for n, we can see the denominator gets bigger. So this goes to 0. So that reasoning implies that, therefore, I'm going to use words, therefore, the original goes to 0. All right. So, I mean, one way to make sense of that is you can see if we plug in a f some terms, let's do that over here. If you plug in some values, you know, um, a sub 1 would be negative 1 to the 1. So it would be negative 1 over 3. a sub 2 would be a positive 1 over 3 squared, or 1 ninth. a sub 3 would be negative 1 over 27, right? <clears throat> so you can see the terms are getting smaller in absolute value. Um, but they're just dancing around zero on opposite sides. Um, if you just looked at the, I mean, another, so that's pretty informal, but if you just looked at, let's just say you looked at the complete negative version of this. So let's just say you looked at this sequence, negative 1 over 3 to the n. Right, so that that's just 1 over 3 to the n, but all the terms are negative. In fact, you could use a property of limits and factor out that negative. We can see that the limit as n goes to infinity is 0 times negative 1 would be 0. We know that, in general, uh, all the positive terms is going to be 0. And all the terms in red here are in between the this sequence and this sequence here. So if it's if all those terms are squeezed in between those two, then it also must go to 0. All right, um, so there's that's very informal reasoning of that, but um, a, a, another thing to do is just take a look at the graph, uh, plot a few points, and you can see um, that the terms will approach zero, but alternating sides of zero. So these two examples here we can we can do pretty quickly. This first one here, let's let's see if we can apply this theorem. So I'm going to just take the limit of the absolute value. So that's just that's just this, which we know goes to zero. So therefore, we can conclude that our original goes to zero as well. All right. So compare that to this situation, in which we try it. And we end up getting we 
we end up getting that this, which we've looked at before, this is 5. This does not imply that the limit of the sequence goes to 5. Right? In fact, <clears throat> it doesn't do that. If you look at the terms, so we'll make a little graph of the terms. So let's say you plug in you plug in 1. When you plug in 1, you get a positive number, and then you get 5 minus 3, which is 2 over 1, which is 2. So you get 2. Just call that a 2. When you plug in 2, you get a negative. 5 times 2 minus 3 is 7 over 2, which is 3.5. So you get negative 3.5. So negative 3.5 is like here. When you plug in 3, you get a positive 12, 4. And when you plug in 5, you get, uh, uh, I'm sorry, when you plug in 4, you get a negative uh, 17 fourths, which is a little more than 4. And so Ultimately, what you can see is that half the time the terms are going to positive 5, and the other half of the time they're going to negative 5. And since they're not appro the, the terms are not approaching one unique value, we would say that this sequence diverges. All right, so this diverges. All right, so if you're going to use that theorem, use it very carefully. Make sure that the absolute value of the terms goes, does, in fact, go to 0. So we're going to finish our discussion of sequences, or introduction of sequences, by talking about what's called the sandwich theorem, although some textbooks I think call it the squeeze theorem. And this says that, that if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of c sub n, let's just say those equal l, and if there is an integer for which uh, those two sequences sandwich a third one called b sub n for all n values, lowercase n values bigger than that uppercase n value, then we can conclude that the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n is equal to l. So ultimately what this is saying is that if you have two sequences that go towards a limit and they in, at some point, at some point, so let's just say that that point is like um, and this diagram is a little, let's just say that point is right here, right? Um, at this, you know, after this point, you can see that B sub n, the red, is completely trapped between C sub n and A sub n. It's always less than C sub n and bigger than A sub n. Well, if those two, uh, those two sequences go to this, uh, this value L, then we can conclude that B sub n goes there too. Um, so it's <clears throat> what'll often be what'll often happen is you'll be asked to prove something using the uh, the sandwich theorem, um, which which ultimately means you need to come up with um, basically the two if we use the analogy the two pieces of bread that are sandwiching it. So we'll use this example here to start. I know that there's other ways to reason why this goes to zero, but let's just use the sandwich theorem as an exercise. Um, to see why, to see how to use it in this case. So it says show that a sub n equals 1 over 3 to the n goes to 0 using the sandwich theorem. So I should have put that using using the th sandwich theorem. Well, let's just use the notation above here. Um, if we let a sub n b. So let's think of something that's um, that 1 over 3 to the n is always bigger than, or at least always bigger than um, at after some at some point, right? At some n lowercase n value. And you don't need to get too creative here. I mean, if you just think of the sequence zero, right, where every term is zero, it's true that. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. I shouldn't use a sub n because that's that's what's written, that's the sequence itself. So let's just use a, a different term. b sub n equal to the 0. Um, right, a sub n is always bigger than 0. So we've kind of trapped it on one side. Uh, now let's just, what we'll need to do is find another sequence that is 
either always bigger than a sub n, or at least at some point becomes bigger than a sub n at, uh, from that point on. Um, so I'm thinking of using, and this is again where you may have to just kind of uh, examine your your library of, of functions that you can think of off the top of your head and, and their behaviors. But if you think of c sub n, it's the case that um, 1 over n is going to be bigger than 1 over 3 to the n. And I think that's true as long as n is bigger than or equal to 0. I'm um, bigger than or equal to 1, rather. So let's see if this works. Or this is how the reasoning would go. I, I know it's going to work. It's just the, the expression, which is what we need to focus on. So I can say then um, um, 0 is less than or equal to 1 over 3 to the n which is less than or equal to 1 over n. Right, so again, just this is my b sub n, this is my c sub n. And this is true um, whenever n is bigger than or equal to 1. So this this 1 here is playing the role of my of my um, my capital N. Right? Sometimes it's not that quick. Sometimes it doesn't happen right away that it's that, that this relation holds, but in this case, it happens very quickly. Um, okay, so now that we've sandwiched the sequence in between those two, we can say since the limit as n goes to infinity of 0 equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, and those both equal zero. Therefore, uh, limits equal zero to by the sandwich theorem. All right. So the the art, I guess, is in choosing the two functions to sandwich it in between. Obviously you need to know what it goes to first, um, but to prove it using the sandwich theorem you kind of have to supply the pieces of bread.